Did you know that the eruption of Mount Vesuvius and construction of the Colosseum of Rome both happened during the Flavian dynasty? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about the emperors of the Flavian dynasty who stabilized Rome after a time of chaos and are the ones to thank for the long-standing Colosseum of Rome. Don't forget the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organization and you can find us on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits in return. Your support helps us create videos twice a week. So make sure to check it out via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. The Julio-Claudian dynasty was founded by Augustus Caesar and ruled Rome from 27 BCE until the last of the line Nero committed suicide in 68 CE. Nero died without an heir and rule was claimed by the general Galba and then by the generals Otho, Vitellius and finally Vespasian. The Flavian emperors were the three men of the Flavian dynasty, Vespasian, Titus and Domitian, who ruled the Roman Empire between 69 and 96 CE. The Flavian dynasty was founded by Vespasian after the chaotic year of the four emperors in 69 CE when there were four claimants to rule, Galba, Otho, Vitellius and Vespasian, plunging the empire into social unrest and civil war. The reigns of the first three only lasted a few months, but Vespasian, a much more competent leader and administrator, stabilized the empire and ruled for 10 years, setting the foundation for his son's equally stable reigns. Vespasian, who reigned between 69 and 79 CE, was a general commanding the Roman legions in the east, including Syria, Egypt, and Judea. He was encouraged to challenge Vitellius by his generals, especially Gaius Licinius Mucianus, governor of Syria, and so he sent his army toward Rome. His general Marcus Antonius Primus defeated the army of Vitellius at the Second Battle of Bedriacum in October of 69 CE, and Vitellius was killed by a mob in December. Vespasian was declared emperor on the 21st of December 69 CE. Administration was first handled by Mucianus and Vespasian's son Domitian, because Vespasian was still in Egypt and did not arrive in Rome until 70 CE. His other son, Titus, assumed command of the armies of the East, who fought in the First Jewish-Roman War of 70 CE. This conflict was not the only uprising during Vespasian's reign, but is the best known as it resulted in the destruction of Jerusalem. Vespasian's reign is characterized by tax reforms, financial stability, building projects, such as commissioning the Flavian Amphitheater, better known as the Colosseum, and the reformation of the Senate. To avoid the chaos that followed Nero's death, Vespasian declared Titus his heir with Domitian to follow. Vespasian died of natural causes in 79 CE and Titus came to power without any challenge. Titus, who reigned from 79 to 81 CE, continued his father's building projects and finished construction of the Colosseum in 80 CE. The amphitheatre took its name from a colossal statue of Nero that stood close by and could accommodate over 50,000 spectators. The project was funded by the treasure looted from the Temple of Jerusalem after the First Jewish-Roman War and it has been suggested that Jewish prisoners were used as slave labor in its construction. Titus's reign is also notable for the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 that buried the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum, the fire of Rome of 80 CE, the campaigns of the general Agricola in Roman Britain, and the revival of the imperial cult which deified the emperor. He died of fever in 81 and was succeeded by Domitian, whose first official act was to have his brother deified. Domitian, who reigned between 81 and 96, honoured his brother further with the Arch of Titus in 82 and other building projects that also paid tribute to his father. He restored the buildings of Rome damaged or destroyed by the fire of 80 and continued the campaigns of the Roman legions in Britain and Dacia. 
His reign is often viewed as a continuation of Titus's, but was really quite different, as he had a more domineering and autocratic character. He sidelined the Senate whenever he could, and instituted policies that could not be questioned. This made him unpopular with the Senate, but quite popular with the people, who benefited from the stability of his firm control, and with the military, whose campaigns he funded. Domitian became jealous of Agricola's military success in Britain, and after his victory over the Picts at the Battle of Mons Graupius in 83 CE, recalled him to Rome, effectively negating the general's advance into the region of modern-day Scotland. Having failed to defeat the Dacians, he signed a peace treaty with their king Decebalus in 89, ending the Dacian Wars. Domitian continually dealt roughly with the Senate, who regarded him as a heavy-handed tyrant, and became increasingly paranoid, quick to suspect anyone of plotting against him. After ordering a series of executions of such suspects, he was assassinated in 96, ending the Flavian dynasty. He was succeeded by Nerva, considered the first of the five good emperors of Rome, who was followed by Trajan, Hadrian, Antoninus Pius, and Marcus Aurelius. Although the Flavian dynasty lasted less than 30 years, its impact was significant. Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian stabilized the empire after the year of the four emperors, strengthened or expanded its territories, built lasting monuments, and restored many of the buildings and temples of Rome, and revived the cult of the emperor, which encouraged cultural unity among the people in regarding their political leader as a god. Among Vespasian's most significant acts, was ensuring a smooth succession by naming his heir and the successor to that heir before his death. This policy of choosing your successor, though not necessarily a relative, would be continued by Nerva and his successors and contributed to the kind of stability that allowed the Roman Empire to reach its height during the reign of Hadrian. Which of the Flavian emperors do you think was best? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos published every single week. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my shirt, you can find this design and a bunch more in our shop at worldhistory.store, or you can find a link for it down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you soon with another video.